Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about your three top makeup challenges that you have. I asked you on my community page a couple of weeks ago what your makeup challenges are, what you would need help with. And I picked the three most requested things on there and we are going to talk about them today. Thing number one was winged eyeliner, not only techniques on how to do winged eyeliner, but very specifically, if you have hooded eyes, which I do, how do you achieve a wing that looks okay? And so I'm going to show you guys in today's video a few different different things to follow in order to achieve a winged eyeliner if you have hooded eyes like I do. Thing number two was how to make cohesive looks, meaning how to match your eyeshadow to your blush to your lipstick and what kind of rules to follow when it comes to that other than doing monochromatic looks. And so of course we are also going to talk about that in today's video. And the third thing we're going to talk about in today's video is eyeshadow placement and eyeshadow blending. How far do you take your eyeshadow? Where do you place the shades and how do you blend them into one another? And so we are also obviously going to be covering that. Not in the order I just mentioned, this was the order of priority for you, but we're going to talk about these three topics in order of application. I would like to know if this video is something that you guys are interested in and if it's something that you guys want me to do more of. So if this video is helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If it gets a lot of thumbs up, I will know that this is a topic that you guys will most likely want me to talk about a little further. And if I didn't cover your main makeup challenge in today's video, I would love to know what your makeup challenge is. So let me know down in the comment section below and maybe we could cover your makeup challenge in another video if you guys want me to do more videos like this one. So let me know whether or not this is helpful. Let me know if you apply this technique and it works for you. I would love your feedback on this video regardless. And obviously, if you're new to my channel and you want more videos like this one, don't just let me know down in the comment section. Also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss them in the future. Okay, we have a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and get started. Hold on, I can't begin this video without telling you about the Refer brush sale that is happening right now. The day that I'm posting the video, the Refer brush sale has started. I have my link down below that you can shop through. And of course, whenever you shop through my link, I make a small commission. So obviously it is very appreciated when you guys click on my links to shop. Besides the Refer brushes link, which will be the first one you'll see in the description box below, I'm also going to leave you links to everything that I'm wearing on my face in today's video and everything I mention as I go through the video. But let's focus on the refer brush sale really quickly because it is buy one, get one free. So you can buy any one brush from their website and get a second brush of equal or lesser value for free. So if you buy two of the same brush, it's like you're getting them for 50% off, which is crazy. One brush that I recommend getting two of no matter what, is brush number five. And I actually have two right here. The reason why is because this brush is perfect for bronzer, but it is also perfect for blush. So I have two right here and I use them for exactly that reason. These are my number five brushes right here. Another brush that I really love from them when it comes to complexion is this one here. This is their brush in number 19 and I use mine for contouring because it gives me a little bit more of a precise application. It has a little bit of a thinner tip and it is perfect for applying contouring shades or blending them out. Now let's get into eye brushes because I am a refer eye brush crazy person and I use them all on a daily basis. I didn't even care to wash them for you today because who cares? Essential brush number one is the refer brush in number 15. This is a really nice fluffy brush and the greatest brush you can ever use to blend out your transition transition shade and I also use it very often to blend out my crease shade. It is tapered but not too tapered but it's also not a flat brush so it just blends everything out with such ease. Essential refer brush number two for eyeshadow application is the refer brush number one. I would get multiple of this one because this brush you will use every day 
for different looks and I love it. It is a tapered fluffy brush, just perfect for putting a color on the outer V of the eye, perfect for blending that color into the crease. I love to use this one when I do halo eyes to blend my matte shade on the inner corner. It just has the perfect size and it is flat so you're not going to blend too far out when you have this brush that is tapered. I love it. So refer number 15 and refer number 1 are essential. Besides that, I also recommend that you get brushes number 14 and 13. These are both smaller fluffy brushes to do precise work with. Brush number 14 is a true multitasker. I love to use this one when I want to control the color I'm putting on the outer corner of my eye and I don't want to blend it too high because it blends dark colors in place. Like if you have a very very intense color that you want to place in a specific area and you don't want to blow it out too far, this is the brush you want to use to blend that with because it is so small, so tapered and so soft. Also for inner corner work it works and this one you can even take underneath the eye to diffuse your under eye area with and it works perfect for that. Besides that, the refer number 13, also a teeny tiny blending brush, also perfection when it comes to blending eyeshadows underneath the eye. This is the one that I used today. It is just fantastic. It moves the product with such ease. It's a little bit less tapered than refer number 14 and also a little bit smaller, which just makes it ideal for that type of work. So these are my four blending brushes of choice. These are the ones I reach for every single day and I could not recommend them enough. I'm pretty sure this is the best refer sale that there's ever been because I feel like usually the most you've been able to get off is 40% and with this sale you're getting 50% off. Let's keep going. I also love me some flat brushes. I often get asked how do you prefer to use a brush versus your finger when you're applying eyeshadow on your eyelid and I do use my finger sometimes but my finger is not precise so for precise application brushes are essential and these right here will not let you down and they will apply your shimmery shiny eyeshadows with the same intensity as your finger does. My favorite one out of the three, definitely this one. This is the Refer number 28 brush. This is a brush that I would also get a couple of because it is teeny tiny. It's perfect for the inner corner. It's perfect for the inner third of the eyelid here. It's perfect to really define your shiny shade on the crease of your eye, ideal for that. And it applies the shimmers like your finger does. If you want something that is going to apply things a little bit faster because it is a little bit bigger, the refer number two is perfection as well. And then um, there's also the refer number 21. Out of these three, this is the one that I use the least, but it's also ideal for very precise application and it packs your shimmers like no other. Only two more brushes to talk about and they are these two right here, the number 26 and the number 3. These are both pencil brushes meaning they are very very tapered on the tip and I love them both so so much. The number 3 is the brush that I always use 100% of the time for smoking out a really deep shade underneath my lashes. It gets right under the lash, very tight to the eye and it packs a punch. So the number three brush is essential when it comes to adding shades to the under eye area. And then I also love brush number 26 right here. This one was a brush that I like wasn't sure what to do with when it first came out and I have found myself reaching for it almost on a daily basis. It works great for blending shades right underneath the eye but I also love it for inner corner shadow because it gets right here into this corner with such ease and it is the perfect shape for inner corner work. Plus it gives you incredible precision. I know that was a lot but I use refer brushes every single day of my life. They are my favorite brand of brushes, the ones that never disappoint. And I know that when you guys buy these you love them as well. You notice the difference that it makes in your eyeshadow application or your powder application because you come back and you let me know in the comments of my video how much you're 
your makeup has changed and how much better it looks because you switched to refer brushes. So I love these and this is the perfect time to buy them because it is buy one get one free right now and these are my essential ones that I recommend. Please shop through my link down in the description box of this video if you're shopping the buy one get one sale from refer and definitely let me know once you try the brushes whether or not they live up to the hype. The first makeup challenge we are going to tackle today is the eyeshadow placement and blending which is something that a lot of you left comments about and I feel like a lot of the issues that I've seen when it comes to eyeshadow placement and blending come from one, sometimes like a little bit lack of patience, two, people who have hooded eyes, they don't really know how high to take their products in order for those products to be seen and sometimes when it comes to eyeshadow placement um, you do what you think you're supposed to do on this area right here and then once you open your eyes if your eyes are hooded um, you can barely see the work that you've done so I'm going to show you today where to place your eyeshadow and kind of some rough guidelines to follow when it comes to doing this. I can't go into very specific things because everyone has different eye shapes, but these are kind of some rules that you can roughly follow and hopefully it'll help you to improve your eyeshadow application. The first topic is how high do we take our transition shade? And this is something that I struggle with myself, not when applying makeup on me because I was so used to my eye shape, but I struggled a lot with how high to take my transition shade when I was applying makeup on clients that had a lot less space between their eyebrow and their crease than I did. I would take it way too high. So the main rule I would say when it comes to your transition shade is you can take it as high as you want to, very very close to your eyebrows, but you still have to leave a little bit of space right underneath the eyebrow where the color of your skin can be seen. You can't transition all the way to the eyebrow. You still have to have a little piece of your skin color that shows through. So for today's demo, I'm going to be using a new palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. This is the Sorcerer palette. I believe I might have a discount code with them. It might be Patty 10, but if it's not that one, I'll leave it down in the description box below. I've been wanting to include this palette in a video, so we're going to play with it today. And of course, the shade that I'm going to use as my transition shade with this one is going to be this one up here. If you're going for a more natural look, usually your transition color is a color that is a couple of shades darker than the color of your skin, but I'm going to play with color today, so this pinky shade is going to be my transition shade. So I usually place my number 15 brush or a big fluffy brush on the bottom edge right here and I blend. And I'm leaving a lot of space right now between the color and my eyebrow because this color is a little bit darker than a transition color should be so we need to blend it up a little higher so with my fluffy brush I'm going to blend the color in place back and forth and once my color is blended in place I'm going to take it a little bit higher towards the eyebrow by blending the edges upwards and I'm just doing little circular motions in order to make this happen. First of all, that color blended incredibly well. Um, and second of all, you can see now how I have my skin color right underneath my eyebrow and then my transition color starts right below that and it goes from lightest and a little bit deeper afterwards. I haven't layered any shades, I just blended that up. And so this is kind of the perfect placement or the ideal placement you would want for your transition shade. You can see the color of your skin right here and then it just gradually goes a teeny tiny bit darker towards the crease of your eye. Again, apply this to your eye shape because we all have different eye shapes, but the thing to avoid here is to take the transition color too high where you can no longer see the color of your skin underneath your eyebrow. I just went ahead and did the same thing on my other eye and as you can see, I left an even amount of space between the transition shade and 
the eyebrow and you can see my skin color in between the two. Moving on to our crease shade and our crease shade should be a color kind of in the middle of the color on your transition and the darkest color you are going with, let's say. So from this palette, I'm going to use this as my crease shade today because I'm going to go as dark as this color right here and there's a couple of rules we'll call it when it comes to the crease shade you definitely want to kind of hug the shape of your eyeball in the place that you are putting the crease color but at the same time if you have hooded eyes you want to make sure that when your eye is open and you're looking straight in the mirror in this case you can still see the crease color hugging the shape of your eye up here right besides that the crease color usually i place either with the refer number 15 or any other big fluffy brush like this one or i take my refer number one which is a fluffy blending brush as well but this one's shaped a little bit thinner right here and it helps me be a little bit more detailed with it since i'm going for a very vibrant color today i'm going to use the smaller brush so this is my refer number one and we are going to take the color unleashed right here and I always start from the outer part of the eye because I want the most pigmentation of color to stay back there and I move forward so hugging my eyeball like I said I'm going to from the back blend forward just like this and then I want to make sure that when I look straight up and my eyes open I can see that crease color around my eyeball which in this case I can so I'm just going to blend it into the transition color you don't want to be blending up here next to the eyebrow you just want to blend from the placement of your shade into the color that you already transitioned with and this is how we create that gradient effect around the eye so using my refer number one brush i'm just very lightly blending that shade into our transition shade something else to note is that your eyelids might fold differently you might have uneven folds in the way your eye opens which is definitely the case for me i have a lot more lid space over here than i have over here so my guiding point is not where my eye creases is the shape of the actual eyeball if that makes sense even though this eye has a lot less crease space i go around my eyeball shape in order for me to place the color in the right place and then i'm going to blend the same way i did the other eye so now we have our transition shade and crease shade placed if things don't look exactly the same down here don't worry about it because we still have a lot to do you just have to make sure that things look evenly blended close to the eyebrow here and that you can definitely see your transition shade with your eye open and now we are going to move on the outer v shade and i'm going to use the same number one brush that i was using for this and i'm going to go into the color empower here which is this nice purpley shade and the outer v color you kind of also want to see with your eye open so what i do is i place it on the outer third of my eyelid here right right here with my brush and i make it as dark as i want it to look which right there is good and then i make sure that i can see that purple with my eye open see i'm looking at you my eye is open and i can still see the depth of that purple on the outer corner there so once the color is placed where i wanted i'm going to start doing little circles around the shade to blend it into our crease color just back and forth have a little bit of patience don't try to like go super high with it because then that will make the placement not what you want it to be you just have to very lightly and patiently do little circles around that shade to blend it into the previous shade now if you feel the need to blend things higher go back with the fluffier brush that only has remaining of your transition shade on it and then with that one you can blend up here a little bit if you think that you know you need to do that as well here we go so this is my outer v color blended as you can see with my eye open you can totally see the smokiness you can see it blended into the rest of my shades let me go ahead and make myself even always starting from where you want your shade to be the darkest now because my eyes are uneven on this side i need to usually take it a little bit higher because when my eye opens it hides a little bit more skin than this eye does so i just make sure that with my eye open i'm still seeing that shade on the outer 
part of my eye here and then I'm going to blend it in place just like I did on the other side. So next there's the question of how far out do you take your eyeshadow and it's kind of hard to do a very precise placement when you're blending colors with the brush but what you can do and what I like to do in order to make sure that both my eyes look even on this outer part right here is I take a makeup wipe or a cotton round with a little bit of makeup remover I wrap it around my finger and I go from underneath my eye right here and I point towards the outer corner of my eyebrow just like that and then I'm going to clean right underneath and you see that sharp edge right there that is exactly kind of our guiding point from now on we are still missing eyeshadow underneath the eye but I do like to do this and I feel like it helps me have a little bit more of an even eyeshadow look. When you do that, you do create some really harsh edges on the end right here. But remember, we're still missing the under eye blending portion of the look. So that usually fixes that issue. So we have our matte eyeshadows blended. We did our transition. We did our crease shade. And we did our outer corner color. So now it's time to play with some shimmer. And I'm thinking I want to use this shade right here to be a nice contrasting color to the colors on my eyelid so I'm going to with the finger tap it in the center of my eyelid here and blend it forward a little bit and I'm making sure to only touch my eyelid with my finger I don't want to go too high or too far out so right there I also don't go all the way in because that can become very messy so with a flat brush this one's my refer number two I'm going back with that same shade and with the brush, I do allow myself to be a little bit more precise. So I take it as far up as I want to, which on this particular eye, since my eyelid is a little bit more hooded, it's higher than where my eye folds. Usually, like I said, I guide myself with my eyeball shape. So this is right here where my eyeball ends. See? <laughs> I take it all the way up there. And that is as far up as I go. With that same brush, I'm going into the color Chaos down here because this would be a nice transition-y shade between the blue and the purple. And I'm going to swipe it in between the two shades right out here. Once again, I want to define my eyelid. On this eye, that's kind of exactly where it folds. So it's a little different. But because I guided myself with my eyeball up here, they look even it looks the same when it comes to the innermost corner of the eye i usually like to take a very small flat brush this one is my refer number 28 and i'm going to use this shade right here and i'm going to go from the inner corner into our previous shade hugging my eyeball once again okay that looks glorious in my opinion very colorful very pink but I'm here for it. <laughs> for the under eye area, I usually go for the same colors I used on the outer corner and crease with much smaller brushes. So this is a refer number three, and I'm going to the color Empower back here. And with this one, I'm going to do the outer corner of my under eye. And I always say make sure that the colors meet down here because that is important. So outer third of my under eye and into what we did on the top of the eye. If you want it very smoky, you could take that purple all the way to the tear duct area, but I'm trying to mimic in this case what I did on top. So since I only put the dark purple on the outer third of the eyelid, I'm only going to put it on the outer third of my under eye. Again, making sure it meets back here with the top shades. And then with a teeny tiny blending brush, this is the refer number 13, I'm going to take my transition shade and smoke everything out with it. So I'm taking it all the way to my tear duct area. And I'm also going to take it all the way up to where I put the transition shade initially on the top of the eye so that it blends out the harsh line I created when I clean things up. Also, when it comes to the under eye, don't be afraid to smoke things up. It looks good, it makes your eye look bigger, 
Once I finish everything, I make sure to tie the inner corner shimmer to the bottom of the eye as well. And so those are all of my rules or guidelines when it comes to eyeshadow placement and eyeshadow blending. Be a little bit more patient, do your little circles around the colors you want to blend, use really good fluffy brushes, use a light hand, and as far as the placement is concerned, I kind of went through all of my little guidelines. So I really hope that this was helpful. Definitely let me know down in the comment section if you learned anything from this video. And we are going to move on to winged eyeliner, which was by far the issue that you guys seem to have the most. Now I feel like for sure the main struggles that I saw in the comments with the winged eyeliner was people who have hooded eyes. I have hooded eyes, I myself still struggle with winged eyeliner. But I have a few tips that I can share with you that hopefully might be helpful. Tip number one is you don't need winged eyeliner in order to have a beautiful eyeshadow look. I can put mascara on right now and be done with this eyeshadow look and you wouldn't even miss or notice the fact that I don't have a winged outlook because everything is blended, things look cohesive and the shape that I gave my eyeshadow look is lifting up my eyes, you know? Which is why we did the little cleanup thing from the outer corner of the eye to the outer corner of your brow. Now, one thing I didn't mention is when I fill in my brows, I make sure that it's lined with the outer corner of my eye to where my eyebrow ends right here. So we're not going to be talking about eyebrows in today's video, but make sure that your eyebrow ends at an angle from the corner of your nose, corner of your eye, end of your eyebrow right there. That's kind of important. That's how you make sure that your eyebrows look nice and even as well. Anyways, back to the wing. You don't need it, especially if you have hooded eyes. You already have very little real estate on your eyelid and you want your shimmer to show right there, okay? So, don't need winged eyeliner. Don't feel like you're missing out. 99.9 .9 of the eye looks I've done here on this channel do not have a winged out look and I like them just the same if not more than when I do decide to do a wing. Now we are going to do a wing today because I still want to show you what I do having hooded uneven eyelids in order to have winged out eyeshadow looks every once in a while. <laughs> Since we have so much color on our eyes already, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to do a colorful wing today. This purple eyeliner is from the Alamar Cosmetics and Disney collaboration and I think it's going to be perfect for this eye look. So rule number one is we already don't have that much real estate when it comes to the eyelid and I definitely want to still show my shimmer. So I've noticed that when you have hooded eyes, it is better to do a half wing than a full wing because you're just going to put a shade right over the shimmer here and then your shimmer is going to show up a lot less. So we're going to start our wing right where our irises are and then back. So first things first, I'm going to do a good old regular line from the center of my eyelid back to the outer corner right here. Nothing too complicated. Just a line from the center of the eye to the outer corner. Now, if you have hooded eyes like me, the main rule in order for you not to ruin your whole look is that you cannot open your eyes until your eyeliner is dry <laughs> because you will ruin everything. And I've done that more times than I care to admit, okay? So I just have my half line from the center to the outer corner and I am waiting for it to dry before I continue to do anything else. The hardest part is obviously to do the outer part of the wing. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're angling it from the outer corner of your eye, pointing towards the end of your brow. And the main thing you want to do, especially if you have hooded eyes, is to create your wing first with your eye open. Because when I open my eye, I hide a lot of skin under here and so if I were to do my wing right here when I open my eye you cannot see it at all so you want to make sure that it is seeing with your eye open so I'm going to with my eye open hopefully you guys can see this create a teeny tiny wing 
back here. You see that little wing right there? Now when I open my eye, that looks very far, very distant from where my previous line is. And we're going to connect that in a second, but for right now, I'm going to make things even. So on this eye, I'm going to create the same little wing. So right now with my eye open, you kind of see that I have my little tail of my wing right here and that it connects to the purple line that I created previously, right? But when I open my eye, again, they're kind of distant, so we are going to connect the lines right there. On this eye, because in my case this one's more hooded, my lines are more separated. So we're going to connect the underline and the top line and fill in the gap. And once again, make sure you are waiting for that to dry. What I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit more right here underneath and connecting it at the top and that makes it be a little bit thicker all around. So take a look right here. This is what things are looking like. So once again, I hope that the little guidelines helped. Definitely do a half wing if you have hooded eyes. Definitely angle it towards the end of your eyebrow. And also make sure that you're doing the wing right here with your eye open because once your eye is open, that is what you'll be able to see and what people who look at you will most likely see, the way that your wing looks when your eye is open. And then just make sure to connect the dots right here at the end and you will hopefully have achieved a successful wing. Now, it takes time and it takes practice, but I'm really hoping that the little guidelines I'm giving you today will help you achieve your wing goals. Now, usually, like I said, I don't really miss a wing when I do an eyeshadow look, like I like this just as much as I liked it before I put the eyeliner on, if I'm completely honest with you, you know? I'm about to get into the third and last for today's video makeup challenge that you guys shared with me, and I was very surprised at the amount of people who struggle with this, and that is making cohesive looks, meaning matching your eyeshadow to your blush to your lips. You don't want it to necessarily be monochromatic, you just want it to all be cohesive and all be flattering, and we are about to get into that, but before we do, I want to talk about these lashes, because these were just sent to me from Kiss, and these are the best Kiss lashes I've ever tried. They are called the Lash Couture Masterpiece One of a Kind Lux Lash, and it says that they are the most mink-like. And I am here to tell you they are mink-like. These look like mink lashes. The style I have on right now is called Pret uh, Porter, I think, and these were the most natural looking out of the three pairs that they sent me, but honestly, they all look amazing and I cannot wait to keep wearing these. These are the best kiss lashes I've ever tried for sure and they look mink like. They look very luxurious, very natural. I don't know where these are sold right now but I will find it for you and link them down below. Anyways, back to our cohesive looks. I don't want to go too deep into like color theory. I want to break it down and make it as simple as can be. And to me, as simple as can be is you want to match cool toned shades with cool toned shades, maybe a neutral shade can be matched to a cool toned shade and warm toned shades you want to match to warm toned shades and maybe you can match a warm toned shade to a neutral shade. Neutral means you can go either way, but if you want a cohesive look when it comes to matching your eyeshadow to your blush to your lips, you don't want to be matching cool tones and warm tones because that might be a little bit too contrasting. <laughs> and then the other main rule when it comes to creating cohesive looks is that you don't want to have too much going on. Now I have a very colorful, very smoky, very bold sort of an eye look today. So I would not want to pair this eye look with bold lips because then you don't know where to look. You don't know what you want to pay attention to with the eyes or the lips. So when I do a very bold eye look, which in my case I love to do bold eye looks, I usually pair that bold eye look 
with a light shade on the lips so that nothing is too contrasting. Right now with this eye look I don't want to put on a lipstick that is a bright pink the color of my eyelids because then your eye wouldn't know where to look. I would want to match this eye look to blush and lips that have a similar undertone but that are not going to compete with the boldness of my eyes if that makes sense. So if I do want to go for a bold lip I usually keep my eyes nice and neutral. I might do a natural looking smoky eye with some shimmer on the eyelid and then pair that with a bold lip and that can look really good. Doing a black winged eyeliner with a bold lip also looks really good but if you've already done colorful smoky bold on the eyes you don't want to do a bold lip as well. I'll stop repeating myself now and go into warm tone versus cool tone blushes. Take for instance this palette right here. This palette is from Patrick Ta and this palette has three beautiful blush shades. We have a very obvious warm tone shade right here in the middle which is this orangey type of shade. Orange means warm. Colors like oranges, burnt looking shades, reds, yellows, those are all going to be warm tone shades. And then this pink right here on the other side, this is a cool tone shade because this does not look red or yellow or orange. It looks kind of the opposite. It has more of a cool undertone. It looks closer to a blue or a gray shade. So when you think cool undertone, think blue, gray. This pink looks more blue gray than it looks red or yellow. I really hope that makes sense. And then this one right here is more of a neutral shade because it's in the middle of the two. It doesn't have too much orange or red undertones, but it also doesn't have as many blue or gray undertones so it is a more neutral shade right in the middle. So my eye look today is a cool eye look. It has pink which pink is usually a cool tone shade and it's got purple in it which purple is similar to blue so purple usually has a cool undertone. So I could pair my eye look today with this shade of blush right here and that would look really nice and cohesive. Or I could pair my eye look today if I wanted to go neutral with this shade right here because even though it's not going to be as close to one another, it's not going to be contrasting either. Here's another example. This color right here is Shelly from Benefit. I have been loving this shade lately, but this is a warm shade, meaning it looks more orange, red, yellow than it does blue, gray. So this one right here, even though it's a nice, um, natural looking shade would be a little bit contrasting with this eye look because the colors are very very different from one another. This is a really nice warm nudie shade but the eyeshadow I have on is very cool tone so I would not pair these together. And by the way these are all general rules. You can literally do whatever you want with makeup as long as you're happy with it and you feel confident in what you're wearing. It doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter but these are just kind of my guidelines we'll call it to creating a look that looks a little bit more cohesive. This one right here also a warm tone shade. I also wouldn't pair it with this eye look. This is California from Benefit. I would go for a more cool tone shade when it comes to the eye look I'm wearing today. So for example take this rare beauty color right here. This is Encourage by Rare Beauty and this shade is a little bit more neutral. I would pair this eye look with a neutral shade or I would pair it with a cool tone shade if I want it to be more monochromatic. Let me find a cool tone shade. I could do this shade right here from NYX. This is in the color Baby Pink and as you can see it's very very similar to the pink on my eyelids so obviously this would be more of a monochromatic look and it would look beautiful. From this Danessa Myricks cheek palette, I could do this shade right there and it also would be a very monochromatic look and that would also look beautiful. Or I could go with the neutral shade right here if I want it to be cohesive but not the exact same color. In fact, I'm going to wear this one today. So this is the shade Tease from Danessa Myricks and I am placing it right here. It looked more neutral on the pan. It looks a little bit more cool tone on my cheek. It matches the eyeshadow really beautiful nevertheless. And so that is a really nice color that you can pair 
with this eyeshadow look but I would have never picked either one of these colors here because I think that because they're a warm undertone they are a little bit too contrasting so whenever you're pairing your blush to your eyes just kind of think is my eye look more warm or more cool tone and then depending on what you see on your eyes and whether that shade is more warm or cool pick a shade with the same undertone to match it besides that neutral looking blushes are going to go with warm and cool eyeshadow looks in my opinion for example the shade pillow talk right here from charlotte tilbury this is a great example of a neutral blush this would go with cool tone looks like the one i have on today but if i were to have an orangey eyeshadow look on i could also pair it with this one because it is a neutral undertone so it's not going to be too contrasting another beautifully neutral shade that i love is this one here from tower 28 this is my favorite cream blush ever um, it's in the color magic hour and as you can see it's really nice and neutral you don't see a lot of warmth in it but it's also not too cool tone it's right in the middle i tend to always favorite neutral looking blushes because they go with everything so magic hour from tower 28 is also a blush that you can pair with any eye look you have on <laughs> and then we have nude venus from pat mcgrath which is pretty much the same color as my tower 28 blush and this could also be paired with this eye look without being too contrasting um but it also has a little bit of warmth in it so it could also be paired with any warm eye look I really hope that that made sense and the exact same rules apply to lipstick colors. I am not going to do an orange lipstick or a very warm nude lipstick with this eye look because I would find that to be a little bit more clashing. I would rather go for a neutral or a cool toned lipstick. So let me find what to wear. This shade right here from Pat McGrath is Nude Romantique 2 and it's the most perfect nude shade. So it has a really beautiful neutral to cool undertone right there and I think it will go fantastic with my eye look today. So let me put it on. And to match that lipstick shade, I'm going to use my Pillow Talk Medium lip liner right there which is basically the same color as this lipstick just a nice neutral to cool tone lip liner so this is the method that i used to figure out what matches what and how to create cohesive looks that aren't necessarily monochromatic that look really nice and where the eyes the cheeks and the lips don't clash okay those are all of my loose rules that I follow when creating eyeshadow looks and I really hope that this video was helpful to you whether you were struggling with eyeshadow placement, whether it was how to do a winged eyeliner if you have hooded eyes like I do or maybe just to figure out what blush goes with what eyeshadow palette. I'm truly, truly hoping that this video helped anyone. And if it did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Also, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe for more videos like this one. Now, these were the three most common makeup challenges I saw when I asked you guys in my community page. But if you have other topics similar to these that you want me to cover in a future video, please let me know down in the comment section what your makeup challenges are other than these that you might want me to get into in future videos. If this video gets a lot of thumbs up, I will know that the video was helpful and also I will know that you guys want me to continue doing videos like this one on different makeup struggles, different makeup challenges. So give the video a thumbs up if you like it and definitely let me know in the comments down below what other topics you would want me to cover next if you're interested in another video similar to this one. I love you guys so so much. Again, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe before you leave. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye!